Welcome back to part 10, if I'm not mistaken, of building the Rick and Morty iOS app. We left off talking a little bit about pagination. We also started to hook up another screen. It's empty at the moment for character details. We're gonna pick up right where we left off and dive into pagination for this character collection view here. So drop a like down below, subscribe, say hello in the comments for the YouTube algorithm, and let's dig in. So where we left off was basically uh, talking about how we're gonna set up our view model to know if we even need to go and uh, fetch more characters. So before we start some fetching, let's get that spinner to show up at the bottom because at the moment it's not showing up. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna create another view and that view is going to inherit from UI collection view and i think it's something called a reusable view yep a collection reusable view and this is going to be a rm uh, let's call this an rm footer loading collection reusable view kind of a long name but you know description descriptive is better than uh, abbreviation 99 percent of the time so let's go ahead and create this it is very similar to a cell such that we need to register and dequeue it so we are going to create a identifier static constant on here. I'm also going to override the initializer. Respectively, we also need to override the required initializer and just toss unsupported in here. I wish Xcode would just automatically, you know, do this for me, even though it does 80% of the job. We're gonna add a constraint uh, function. So we're gonna say add constraints. We're gonna use this in a moment. And I guess for now that's good enough. So let's actually go to our collection view and let's actually register this and talk about how the heck we're gonna use it. Um, before I do that, let me actually just toss a color in here. So one thing you'll notice is that this does not have a content view, which is by design. Let me make this blue because we wanna actually see it when it shows up. And let's go back to our view model for the character list view. And we're gonna register this to the collection view. and. Actually, we need to go to the character list view where the collection view resides. So we are going to register this in the collection view and we're gonna say register. And when you type our register, you'll see you get um, another function here called view class. We wanna register a uh, rm footer loading collection reusable view dot self. And this is gonna have an identifier, which will be the identifier we added. And this thing here is important, this is the supplementary view of kinds. So this is going to be the UI collection view and we want element kind section footer. So basically what we're saying is we're registering a footer that we can you know, show up at the bottom if we wanted to, we can dequeue it, but we need to actually inform the collection view of this. Now we need to actually implement the data source functionality, whether or not this uh, should show up. And now that actually resides in the view model, which is what I was thinking of earlier. So to do that, we need two things. We need to specify the size of the footer as well as the function, which will dequeue the footer itself. So we are going to say collection view, and there is a function in here that we want, which is view for supp supplementary element of kind at. Now we don't care about the index path, but what we do care about is the fact that we can return a UI collection reusable view, but it has to be something, it can't just be nil, which is a little strange, right? So what we wanna do is we're gonna say guard that the kind is going to be a UI collection view element kind footer. Otherwise, we're just going to return I'll just do it, I guess. We're just going to return a base view. So we'll just say UI collection reusable view. We'll just create it like so. Otherwise, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we wanna dequeue that particular uh, footer that we created. So we'll say footer will be collection view. And this is just like the cell that we did before. We're gonna say dequeue a reusable supplementary view of kind will be kind. Identifier is an identifier we passed in. I'm gonna line break this so it's a little more readable. And the index path will just be the index path that we're getting from this parameter uh, of this function. And then we can just return the footer like so. Now, before we go ahead and give this a run, we also need to specify the size for this footer. So there's another function, which is collection view. And what we're looking for is, let's see if I can find it, um, so there is reference size for footer, 
and there should be another function. Let's see if I can find it because there's literally tons and tons of these. So we don't want any of these display ones. We don't want the editing ones. Let's see if I can find it. So there's select, layout, okay, layout reference size. Perhaps it is a reference size one. I could have swore it was something else. So there's collection view, target index path. Nope, we want collection view. Now let's do footer. I guess it is reference size. Okay, so maybe I misremembered. So here what we can actually specify is the size for this particular uh, footer. So the function is collection view, layout, we passed that in here as well, and it's a reference size for footer in section. So what I'll go ahead and do is I will say return CG size, and the width here will be the width of the collection view. So we can say collection view dot frame dot width and the height I'm gonna hard code to be a hundred. So let's go ahead and give this a build and run and let's see if we see a blue view at the bottom when we scroll down. Cool, so we in fact do see a blue view. Now we only wanna see this if we have something to show. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say if the kind is an element footer and we have should show load indicator, right? Because if we shouldn't show this, then it's kind of silly. So let me change this should show load indicator uh, property, if I can find where I put it. Let's just return false here. Now, we're still gonna, I believe, see the blue view. Actually, we're just gonna see empty space if I'm not mistaken, or crash, I guess, in that case. So let's see why this is actually crashing. We're gonna debug this together, like I promised at the beginning of the video. So it's saying you're trying to DQ a view of kind, let's see, elements at index path where elements call in kind, UI collection view kind section. Uh, the view returned from this was not retrieved by calling. Okay, so it's basically yelling at us that we didn't actually properly DQ um, a view, we kind of instantiated it, which is actually exactly what we did. So let me explain what that means. So what it's not happy about is the fact that you know, we did correctly come into the else of this guard. However, what it's not happy about is the fact that we are instantiating this instead of returning it appropriately. So we're gonna do something a little clever here. We're just gonna fail error and say unsupported. And instead of putting the check here, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna say guard here and if the if you know if we shouldn't show this and we come into the else here meaning we shouldn't show this loading thing at the bottom the footer what we're going to do is we're just going to make the size of the footer zero and effectively that'll just hide it right so we're we're always going to have it but we're not going to ever you know crash and return you know just any other view so let's go ahead and uh, give this a build and run and we shouldn't crash now we should just not see any space down there so the footer is actually still being returned, but we just don't see it because we're saying, okay, the size of U is zero because the computed property up here, we're just hard coding this to false for should show the load more indicator. If we get rid of that, now we have this blue view. So the blue view looks great, not really that cool. Let's put a spinner in there. We already saw how to create a spinner. It is a UI activity indicator view. So I will get rid of that. Let me actually just make it the proper color, which will be system background. And there's gonna be basically two functions on here. Um, and what that is going to be is, well, I'll just do one perhaps. We're gonna say public func uh, start animating. And start animating more or less is just going to start animating our spinner, which I have yet to add. So let me go ahead and add that. We'll say private let and actually, let's be smart about this. We can copy and paste it from our character list view. So I'm literally gonna take it from in here. I'm gonna paste it in here, make sure everything is looking good. We will go ahead and add this as a sub view. And we also want to set up its constraints. So I'll just call this add constraints function I already put into here. And I wanna say I can steal the constraints from this prior view as well. So let's see, let's go ahead and grab these constraints and we'll adjust them as needed. So let's see, the width anchor, height anchor, we made these 100, 100, I think that looks good. And then center X and Y are still center of its container. So this should be good to go. And we're gonna say spinner, start animating. And I guess that's all we kind of really need to do. And the other thing that I will mention is 
Yeah, once we load in more stuff, this footer will kind of get pushed to the bottom. We probably should stop its animation, but we'll get into that optimization later on. So let me just pause this or stop the application and give it a run again. And let's come down here and see if we see a spinner. All right, so we totally do not see a spinner. So let's see what the heck happened with our spinner. So let's go ahead and see. Well, actually, I do know what happened. Memory serves. We just added this start animating function, and we never actually called it. So let's go back into our uh, view model where we DQ the footer and let's see if I can find where it's DQ'd. We need to cast this footer to a RM, shoot this guy right here. And now we can say footer and we can say start animating. Now we can't return an optional here. So if you go ahead and try to compile, it'll yell at you if you try to build. So we are going to force it uh, via a a guard let statement so we'll go ahead and do that and in this case we'll once again do unsupported like so and I guess the intelligent thing would be to just combine these two guard statements into one and I'll fix that indentation by highlighting and doing a control I and I think we should be good to go we want to actually move the start animating call below the typecast. Let's go ahead and fix this one more time. And let's see what I screwed up. We don't need this optional anymore. And let's see if we see that spinner. All right, looking pretty good. Look at that. We've got a spinner at the bottom. Unfortunately, it's not really doing anything at the moment, but it's a spinner nonetheless. Let's talk about doing something. So maybe this is the last thing we'll cover in this video. So we previously brought in this scroll view did scroll function. And if we just go ahead and print out two things, you'll very easily figure out how we're going to calculate if we're at the bottom. So we are going to get the offset in the vertical direction, which is the scroll view dot content. Uh, let's see, content offset dot y, right? The y axis. We're going to get the total height of the content inset. So we're going to say scroll view content size dot height. And what I'll also go ahead and do is. Uh, get the scroll view's actual frame height. So let's call this total content height because the content is inside of the scroll view. It's larger than the actual visual that you see, right? So we only see from here where it says the title to this kind of third row, but we actually have a total of 10 rows. So we're going to get total scroll view height. This is, I guess, the fixed height, and this is going to be the scroll view dot frame dot size dot height. So let me go ahead and print each of these. So we are going to print here and this will be offset. And I guess we can just interpolate here, which is basically sticking a string inside of a string or a, I digress, a, a number or some other variable inside of a string. So let me go ahead and just copy and paste these. And then we'll also make sure we go ahead and uh, change these on the right hand side and let's see what we get when we run this and start scrolling down so I'm gonna hit command K in the console just to clear it and I'll scroll a very tiny amount and I'll come back here and we get a bunch of prints so let's take a look so you'll notice a couple of things the offset increases as we go down which makes sense the total height of the content does not change neither does the height of the the fixed height well, I guess this one actually did change. So the total scroll view fixed height. Now, this is actually an interesting learning example. Why did this change? If you actually look at this visually, you'll see that this navigation controller's uh, navigation bar by default gives us this cool functionality where it shrinks. So if I go ahead and clear this and scroll it a teensy tiny bit more, you'll see that now the fixed height won't actually move. It's 671.3 repeating and the content size height won't change as well. The only variable here is the offset. So let's scroll to the bottom and let's see where our offset lands. So our offset basically now is 221 or 2, uh, 2251 and the total height is 2922. Uh, 22. And if you subtract 671, that's basically where we're at. So let's do a little bit of basic math here and figure out how we know if we're at the bottom. So we're gonna say that we wanna check if the particular offset is greater than or equal to 
the scroll views content size subtracting the height here and if it's you know if it's greater than or equal to that we can say should start fetching more right because we already guarded against the fact the state that we do have more stuff to load and if we get here we should start fetching more so let's go ahead and get rid of these prints and let's try scrolling down and see what happens so by default when we scroll right a few rows nothing should happen we should only hit that once we're all the way at the bottom let's see nothing should happen still awesome we're going to continue down should be getting close to the bottom. Let's get a little bit more. Hopefully that's the last row. And at this point we see our spinner. We should see a print now, but actually we actually need to go all the way to the bottom for it to start printing. And the reason for that is the height of that footer where the spinner sits, that itself is 100 points tall. So the intelligent thing here to do would be that if the offset is greater than the total height minus the total fixed height, minus another 100, and then I'll do minus another 20, aka 120 is a nice little buffer. So we'll go ahead and also put a breakpoint here, and if you're not familiar, our code, once it gets in here, it'll snap to Xcode by default, and it'll tell us that we came inside of here. So we can just scroll down, and boom, at that point, we have reached here, and this is roughly right above the last row. I can hit this little play button towards the bottom, and this is where it's gonna start loading more content. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this breakpoint so I can continue scrolling down. And so essentially around here, it'll start to load more, which is exactly what I want. And the beauty of this is as we load in more content, this content offset and height, right, the size property will be dynamically updated and managed by the scroll view, AKA the collection view. Now, one other very last thing that I wanna to touch on is a edge case here that I, hope slash assume some of you have seen right when we come down here this print gets printed a bunch of times probably hundreds of times as we continue to scroll the loading operation to load more characters is going to take maybe a second but we don't want to accidentally call that request you know n times to load more characters while we're waiting so we do want to do one more thing and that one more thing is we want to introduce a private variable in here and this is going to be called is loading more characters and by default it'll be false and down here what we're going to say is we're going to make sure that not only should we show the load more indicator meaning we should actually care about what goes on in here but we're going to make sure that we're not currently loading more characters such that this only prints once so i'm going to go in here and do true and now you'll see something pretty interesting happen and that is, if we scroll all the way down, we'll see this guy printed only once. So it should start fetching more, it gets printed, and that's it. So that's basically it. What we can actually do in here now is we have this function defined. We will probably implement it in the next video, but we can say fetch additional characters. That's essentially what I'm gonna do in here. And I'm gonna actually move this, um, this assignment of true into this function, and then we can actually build this out. So that's where we will wrap it up. We did quite a lot here. We got this footer showing, we actually added a bunch of business logic. So drop a like before clicking away, subscribe if you're into iOS, tweet the video, at me on LinkedIn, love interacting with y'all. Say hello in the comments, or if you had any issues, happy to help as much as I can. I will see you in the next part.